a warm welcome to each one of you. This is the biology class and myself, B.G. Suresh, teacher of Silver Hills Public School, Kori Code. In today's session, I am dealing with class 8 biology, chapter 8, cell, structure and functions. So let us see. Before we begin the class, what are the learning objectives for this session? We will be learning new terms related to cells. We will try to identify different parts of a cell. We will be making comparison between plant cell and animal cell. We shall also try to distinguish between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. So let's not waste any more time. Let's go into the topic of cells. Cells we can say are the building blocks of all living organisms. They build up the body. We can define them as the basic structural and functional units of any living organism. Structural means they make up the body structure. Functional means they do each and every function. So here we learn about teamwork. Unless they cooperate and coordinate, we cannot exist as a single living organism. So how do cells do that? Let us see. Before that, who first discovered cells? It was this scientist by the name Robert Hooke in the year 1665. At that time, there wasn't the compound microscope that you see today in your biology lab. He had a very primitive microscope like that. And when he cut a small piece of cork cells and viewed it under the microscope, he saw something which looked like compartments of a honeycomb and he called them cellulae. That was when somebody viewed a cell for the first time and now we call these basic units as cells. So cells join together to form tissue. The next higher level is organ. Many different organs join together to form an organ system, ultimately forming an organism. So this is the hierarchy, starting with the smallest unit called cell and ending in the highest unit called organism. Tissue, the definition is a group of similar cells doing the same function. A group of similar cells doing the same function. And the study of tissues is called histology. The study of tissues is called histology. Similarly, the study of cells is called cytology. Cytology. Let's compare organisms which are unicellular with those which are multicellular. Unicellular. From the name you can understand, uni means one. So such organisms have only a single cell for their body and it is that single cell which does all the functions like respiration, taking in food, excretion, reproduction. All the functions are done by that single body cell. Examples of such organisms are amoeba and paramecium. There you can see the picture of a paramecium. It is otherwise called the slipper animal cule. Doesn't it look like a slipper? And you can see its entire body is covered with hair-like structures called cilia. By beating of these cilia only, the paramecium can propel itself forward. Another organism is the amoeba. It doesn't have any particular shape, 
It keeps changing its shape because it has got false feet which are called pseudopodia. Pseudo means false, podos means feet. So it has those projections which keep coming and going. They are the false feet with which the amoeba can move around and also capture prey. Over there, can you see? The amoeba is about to engulf a prey shown there in red color. So it has put forth its pseudopodia around the prey. Soon it will be capturing the prey. So those were unicellular organisms, paramecium and amoeba. We now move on to cells in the human body which have different shapes. One good example is the RBCs the red blood corpuscles. Look at them. They appear round in shape like a disc and biconcave. Both the upper and lower sides are concave. They contain a pigment called hemoglobin which is responsible for carrying oxygen towards the cells and carbon dioxide away from the cells to the lungs so that you can breathe out the carbon dioxide. So these are the RBCs which have a rounded shape. Other cells like muscle cells also have a peculiar shape. See this particular shape is called spindle shape where it is broad in the middle and thin and tapering towards the sides. So that is the spindle shaped muscle cells. And another example is that of the nerve cell or the neuron. They are the cells which make up your brain and spinal cord. It doesn't look like a cell at all. See this is a main cell body with the nucleus. You can see there are many projections called dendrons. And one of those projections is a long one which is called the axon. This doesn't look like a cell at all, but it is a cell. It is the long and branched nerve cell. So just now we discussed about RBC, muscle cells and nerve cells which have peculiar shapes. Which is the largest cell? It is the unfertilized egg of an ostrich. See here you can see the mother bird is incubating its eggs and if you compare the size of an ostrich egg to a hen's egg, see how much bigger it is? So that is the single largest cell. Now we move on to the parts of a cell. We are going to discuss these important parts, cell membrane, cell wall, cytoplasm, organelles and nucleus. These are the important parts that make up a cell. We start off with the cell membrane or the plasma membrane which is forming its boundary. So why should there be that cell membrane? These are the functions. It will give shape to the cell individuality and shape to the cell. It encloses the cytoplasm and nucleus so that all those contents will be inside the cell membrane. It is porous and allows movement of materials into the cell or out of the cell. So it is not a rigid boundary. It allows entry of useful materials and exit of unwanted materials from the cell. It also separates cells from one another. So individuality of the cell is maintained because it is having the plasma membrane. Now in the case of plant cells, they have outer to the cell membrane another thick cell wall made of cellulose which gives it extra protection and rigidity and shape. That wall is called the cell wall. Over there you can see in dark green 
that is the cell wall of plants made of a material called cellulose. Next is cytoplasm. It is a jelly like substance inside the cell membrane but outside the nucleus. It is here that all the cell organelles will lie. And what are organelles? They are membrane bound structures which are found in the cytoplasm of the cell. They have definite functions and those functions are essential for the cell. And only if the cell does it properly can we function as an organism. So which are the examples of cell organelles? Let us see mitochondria, Golgi body, ribosome etc. Ribosome is very essential for protein synthesis. Similarly, this sausage shaped structure is called the mitochondrion. It is known as the powerhouse of the cell. Powerhouse of the cell because it produces the energy currency called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. When you go to the supermarket and wish to buy things, you have to give money, you have to give currency. When some work is to be done in the cell, energy currency is needed and that energy currency is ATP, adenosine triphosphate. To close your eyelid you need energy. Then imagine how much energy, how much ATP will be needed for running, dancing, studying etc. So all that energy is produced in this structure called the mitochondrion, plural is mitochondria. It is known as the powerhouse of the cell. Golgi body that is another organelle, it is helping in packaging of materials and moving materials around in the cell. Plant cells have another organelle called chloroplast, chloroplast the green plastid. It is here that there is a pigment green pigment called chlorophyll which helps to trap light energy during photosynthesis. Photosynthesis you know is the method by which plants prepare food, they trap light energy and they combine two raw materials carbon dioxide from the air and water from the soil to form sugar. So if the plant must do that it needs light energy and that light energy is trapped by this organelle called the chloroplast. Yet another structure found in the cell cytoplasm is the vacuole. Over here you can see this is the plasma membrane shown in white color. Here you can see the nucleus in red color. The cytoplasm with the organelles is shown in green color. And the one in the middle, that space in the middle, that is called the vacuole. So vacuole we can say is a fluid filled or an air filled space which is covered by a membrane and lying in the cytoplasm. Uh, an air filled or a fluid filled space in the cytoplasm is called the vacuole. Another very important part of the cell, the part which controls it, that important part is the nucleus. It generally stains dark when we try to give color to the cell by staining it. It will catch more of the stain and become dark in color. And normally it is found in the center of the cell. But in the case of plant cells it may be pushed to one side. So that important control center of the cell is called the nucleus. Nucleus has chromosomes. What are chromosomes? They are thread like structures found in the nucleus 
which carry genes which are the units of heredity. So they carry genes which you got from both your father and your mother. That is the reason why you look like both your father and your mother or their parents because you got genes from your parents and you got those genes through thread like structures called the chromosomes which lie in the nucleus. So two important functions of the nucleus. It has genes for heredity and it controls all activities of the cell. It is like the king of the cell controlling all the activities of the cell. Now another new term prokaryotic cell. We are going to compare that with another term eukaryotic cell. So prokaryotes or prokaryotic cells are primitive cells with no definite nucleus. Of course they have the genes and the chromosomes but they are not found in that dark area called the nucleus. It is just lying in the cytoplasm because there is no nucleus at all. So example for prokaryotic cells are bacteria. So here is a bacterial cell. You can see it has got a flagellum for moving around. And over here you can see there are the chromosomes lying naked in the cytoplasm. You do not find any nucleus at all. So bacterial cell is an example for a prokaryotic cell. Now another term eukaryotic cell. These are cells which have definite nucleus and the nucleus is bound by a membrane called the nuclear membrane. Examples are all higher organisms including human beings, plants, etc. So look at this, when you take an onion peel and focus it under the microscope, you will find cells like this and there are dark bodies in the center of each cell. They are the nuclei and these structures are the cells. Similarly, if you take a cheek cell stain, okay, you can observe the epithelial cells in the inner wall of your cheek. So the cheek cells are like this, many sided and you can see clearly the nucleus. This dark body is the nucleus. So those are the cells in the inner side of your cheek. Now let us have a comparison of plant cell and animal cell. This is a plant cell. You can see there is a large vacuole. There is a thick cell wall and there are these green structures called the plastids, the chloroplast. So all these prove that this cell is a plant cell. But in an animal cell you find there is only a thin plasma membrane around it. There is a nucleus right in the center but a vacuole is absent. No green chloroplast also. So this is an animal cell. It can't be a prokaryotic cell like that of a bacterium because there is a definite nucleus. And over here uh, you can see those long tubes are another kind of organelle called ER, endoplasmic reticulum. So let us see the differences between plant cell and animal cell. Plant cells, they have a thick cell wall made of cellulose. They have green chloroplasts and they have a large vacuole. Whereas in an animal cell, the thick cell wall is totally absent. Chloroplasts are also absent. Vacuoles may be absent. If at all present, it will be 
very, very small. So when you observe under a microscope, you can easily identify whether it is a plant cell or an animal cell which is given. So let us summarize what all we learnt in this chapter. We saw that cells are the basic structural and functional units of any living organism. Study of cells is called cytology. Cells of the same kind group together to form tissue. The study of tissues is called histology. The cell is covered by a membrane called the cell membrane. In plant cells, outer to it there will be the cell wall made of cellulose. Inside the cell membrane there is a jelly like substance called the cytoplasm. In that there are small membrane bound structures which we call the organelles. They have different functions like ribosomes we saw they are helping in protein synthesis, Golgi body is helping in packaging of materials. Then mitochondrion it is liberating energy for the cell like that they have different functions. The nucleus in the center that is the control body of the cell and we saw plant cells have thick cell wall, they have large vacuole and green colored chloroplasts. All these three are absent in the case of animal cells. And if it is a primitive prokaryotic cell, it will not have definite nucleus. The chromosomes, the thread like chromosomes with the genes will be lying naked in the cytoplasm. Whereas a higher cell which is having definite nucleus bound by a nuclear membrane that is called a eukaryotic cell. So children I hope you have understood it. Thank you so much.